Okay, found another video effect to play with. And uh, the last journal I recorded, I said that there were four on that day. I was wrong. There are four on this day. This is from 3 9, and the Mayan day was 3 read, and 3 is a day of flow, and it was that. Okay, began early too. It's going on 3 a.m., and I'm charged with some kind of energy again. Actually, it's been pretty constant these last days or a week or two, whatever it is, feeling somehow filled with a divine or pleasurable energy or sensation or I don't know what. I surely picked a challenging field in which to be a communicator, the spiritual one. I don't know what's going on. Since it's been continuing, well, what does that tell me? Could we perhaps have reached a, a higher plateau of the photon energy belt? We're in it, you know. The 1221 thing is just when we're dead center. That's not when we enter. We've been in it for a while. Um, and, well, I think 1221, uh, all 1221 brings us is to hit it dead on for the planet, for the solar system to be centered in its alignment to the galaxy center. I don't know for sure, so if someone does, do correct me in the comments. I'm fine with that. Truth is always more important to me than anything else. Not that we can have real truth here in 3D, but we do get as close as we can and it's a joyous pursuit. I adore truth. To me, it's another word for God when it's capitalized. Just like divine love and peace, also divine, and then there's joy. They're all divine attributes, or they can be. In 3D, we have but a shadow of those, and even the shadow can be simply marvelous. Oh my goodness, though, when we experience the real thing, it leaves us with an inability to fully express it. We know we're in something divine. When will we wake up, my friends? Well, are you ready? Are you ready to let absolutely everything else go to fade into insignificance? And so, to be presented with a whole new reality? Do you think that's how it will happen? Well, maybe it will. But I suspect the daily, the hourly changes we're going through now are what's bringing it on. Looks to me like the incremental way has been chosen to bring these major changes on. That makes staying closely in union with now and with now here all that much more important. It gets almost distracting the constant and increasing pace of change, but it needn't be since in now is the only time they'll be manifesting. We miss nothing by staying in now. Mind has grown so accustomed to being all over the map and smeared out across time that it feels somehow deprived to be told to let all of that go. It's funny. Mind thinks it will be missing things if it's made to stick with the now. It's really hilarious for if you look at it. There's no other time in existence but now. Never was never will be. In 1242, it was just now. In 1498, it was just now. You know, in, in 2294, it'll just be now. That's all there is. What a crazy world mind has invented that keeps us anywhere but the present moment. Very strange. People get addicted to their minds, do you see? 
They design their own little comfort zones and don't want to be parted from them, even to view reality directly. They'd rather have it at second hand. It's truly bizarre, but to many who are sleeping in this point, too many are sleeping for the strangeness to be seen. It will be, but many more are waking up to it each day. You know, I'm really goofing up here, folks. I don't know what this is about, but I'm not going to reread it. You get the sense of it, or you can look at the transcript. Part of this is because the dark side, or the powers that were, got carried away. They got too out there, too obvious in what they're doing. Personally, I think they're the ones that are racked with fear. They've looked ahead and hated what they saw. Having kept all the best science and technology goodies and understandings for themselves, top secret and all that, they've been playing with time for decades. And they have a good idea of what's coming, and they're getting desperate, trying to change it to prevent it. And they're showing their hand in that desperation, which is further helping wake more of us up. I really do say all this fear is something they are projecting on us. They are the ones truly in fear. They see the light on coming and uh, they just don't want to admit they can't stop it. Now, somehow, I just can't quite feel sorry for them. How about you? I don't feel callous or hard-hearted either, just more than willing for them to receive what is their due, karmically. Sometimes I even make prayers, calls for its return to be accelerated so that they can get their learning done and get on with waking up, too. Uh, by the way, the way I do that is I just pray for the action of a mirror to come in so that whatever darkness they send out is simply mirrored back to them. So you don't have to send them negative energy. Just let them receive their own. That, that does it. I wonder if you see what a wonderful thing it would be for simply everyone to suddenly awaken. Yeah, even the bad guys. Well, I do. I'm sure that was considered and argued for by many in the higher dimensions, in the higher realms too. My guess is that it would cause too much trauma for too many, too many still stuck sound asleep. So the gentler option was taken, the incremental one. Now that doesn't say that there won't also be some critical mass point reached where we all pop up into a new atmosphere, the higher dimension. Probably both are true, incremental and popping up. Now it's kind of funny too to hear people arguing over this, taking positions for either side, still clinging to the duality and taking sides when both can quite easily be true and at the same time. Remember that the higher dimensional way is to contain both poles. Leave separation and taking sides on things behind. That's old school now. Watch yourself when you do it. Just watch. The new ways are upon us. They crept up when we weren't looking. Oh, wait, we were looking. It's just that we were looking to 1221. It is so funny. Things that are so obvious that we're just missing. Oh, well, life is funny like that. One of the greatest things I've been discovering while awakening is the rollicking sense of humor of the divine. When heart vision develops or when we come into it, things get so lightened up that you spend a lot of time laughing or a lot more time. 
and there's really no way to justify or explain it either. You just have to experience it for yourself. I know, easier said than done, but not entirely. It's a lot easier than most people know. Excuse me. I like kitties at everything, but when I get too close with them or with the puppy, a little bit of an allergy to their fur. Okay, just like the sages have always pointed to simplicity, associating it with wisdom, so is humor associated with wisdom. Now, that's what I'm seeing anyway. Perhaps you have to make friends with divine love to see this. I don't know. It's much easier to see once you recognize how the whole structure of simply everything, everywhere, every when is nothing but love. Even the tough stuff. By then, one has largely left mind dominance behind. Oh sure, one still has and uses the mind. It's just that one is no longer dominated by that but has reclaimed that position of control for heart or for spirit, whatever your term. And that's perhaps the key, the signature crossing point, a shifting of control of the life from the mind to the soul or the being. Also said, from the head to the heart, this is perhaps the hardest one shift ever made by man or woman. It's simply huge. Gets much easier after that. The before and after of it are light years apart. The change is that drastic, but it's a thoroughly internal change. Nothing in the outside world looks any different, making it that much harder for mine to swallow that this change could even be real mind. It goes through some very hard times during this switch, but if you're in the midst of backing away of the detachment that's creeping up on most of us, then that makes it so much easier to bear. So much of all of this is in how things are seen. Have you noticed this yet? An argument could be made that it's all a matter of perspective, but it goes deeper than that. Vision is the key, though. Without the vision shift, there's just no waking up. Until people turn their vision inward, this can't be seen. None of it. While people are so taken up, so interested in unreality, manifest as the outward appearance of things, they'll be mesmerized in that and unable to see more deeply into things. What creates, what projects the out there is this in here. That's the way of it. When, oh, when will people see? One is rather helpless before this fact, for no one can make anyone see anything. Choice and free will are also the key. And respect. Along with our newfound detachment, I hope comes a great big dose of respect for one another. We've got to get out of each other's business and just let people be. It sounds simple and basic and oh so reasonable, Yet, in the implementation, it's anything but. We're just so used to having our nose in other people's business, voicing opinions on how they should lead their life, how they should think, how they should act, how they should feel. Uh-uh. So, the time itself must be ripe, it seems. Whether it's this photon band energy or solar radiation or some sort of cosmic radiance or who knows what, we seem to be awaiting some natural changes to take place to situate mankind for the rest of this generalized waking up. 
it's largely a function of the biological, the very real biological changes taking place within each of us, mostly undetected or blamed or brushed off on something else, something other than ascension symptoms for most. Oh, my friends, do please pause now and often and inject a great big dose of pure enjoyment into this now moment. It's a choice. Don't let these precious, priceless moments rush by without seriously enjoying them. Let's become a connoisseur of the now, the way we have, or the way the French are, shall we say, of their food. Take it to the heights that way. Let enjoyment become one of your main practices or pastimes. And we could learn a lot from the French in the way they enjoy their food and probably life in general. It will grow on you once you begin practicing it, this joy. Just determine that no matter what happens today or even tonight, this can carry over into your dreams. You are bound and determined to have fun with it. Be stubborn about having fun. Just choose joy. Be so determined that nothing can rob you of your joy in every moment. Determined to recall what an important thing this really is. We are such joy-filled beings, so simply blissful in our native divine demeanor that many will be quite shocked to discover this side of themselves. We've got a lot of stuffed shirts out there who need to unbutton at least the top button and lighten up. Are you one? You know if you are. Most of us are sometimes. Why so glum after all? Are you not in possession of perhaps the most highly prized commodity in the universe right now? And that would be a human body on planet Earth. It is not the, it is this not the very most special and ultimately to be the most delightful time possible to be here and determined to stay here doing this. Can you not see that? If not, well, start practicing. Get into heart quickly and don't leave. That's the heart of all the fun. Joy, fun, laughter. I want to see and feel more of this. I want to feel it in your vibration when you comment or send messages, even if you're scolding me. Enjoy it. Let it slip into your emails and your communications with everyone. Joy is contagious. I may be no prophet, but even I can see that such amazing, phenomenal joy, as is available to us in heart, is on the horizon, and it will make all that came before it, all the tough stuff, fade into the background, and very soon. We're not even talking a decade here. I mean soon. Maybe it's the photon belt thing. It's my suspicion that that plays the leading role. I don't know, of course, but the solar system is experiencing unheard of changes throughout, especially the sun. All the planets are having global warming. Check it out. The info is out there. It's not on the mainstream media, but it's available through NASA. It's at least coincident with passing into the flow of the galactic energy, this photon belt coming from the heart of the Milky Way. So don't forget to be in joy, no matter what. Recognize, realize that you can do this. It's within your power. It takes a decision and then a shift, a determined shift. 
This decision will actually accelerate you along toward ascension. That's how I read it. And hey, what have you got to lose but your old sour puss anyway, right? Maybe we could call it intentional joy. There's a thought. Let's start a new craze and call it intentional joy. Fits right in with that rollicking laughter I called for earlier. As long as you're heart-centered, this will work for you. You won't have to fake it either. It's actually real, this joy. It's a real marker of the higher dimensions and of our own higher self. So everyone, let it be the free will choice of all who hear about it. Let's take up intentional joy and spread it around. It's sure to catch on. Okay, I have something else I want to share, but I think I'll make it a separate video because this one's already 21 minutes. See you again soon.